Okay, here's the new mix. We're taking the Epsom salts, and cook them down on a stove. This will remove the water molecule that's associated with the magnesium sulfate. And we're going to use this new crystal to dope the cell with. Another thing that I've modified on these new cells is the magnesium. I've drilled this out to allow for more surface area, which will give more current. So we're going to continue to cook the Epsom salts down until we have a hard crystal that contains no water molecule that is specifically associated with the crystal. Here you see the Epsom salts. Now it's completely liquefied and the water is boiling out of it. We're almost medium heat. This process seems like it's going to take about a half hour to 40 minutes. Here we are towards the end of the process. It has turned a solid white color now and is damn near hard as a rock. And it appears to be just about done. It's just about stopped boiling. So probably another 10 minutes or so will be done. We're going to get this red hot, let it cool for five minutes, and then we're going to dip it in a solution of borax and water. This is going to form corpus copper. Okay, now I'm letting it cool. We're going to let it sit here for five minutes. It's got a nice even gray layer all over it. see the layer that's forming and as it's cooling off it's actually flaking off inside there I got about another minute before I dip it into borax it's still that hot after five minutes of cooling okay now see the nice oxide layer that's been formed on here what we're attempting to do is create a semiconductor which is like a dam in a river it'll allow the energy in but won't allow it out now I'm gonna go rinse this off in cool water and repeat the process until see this nice thick layer here I wanna have that all the way around it and then once I get all that off of there you should have a nice reddish colored copper this process usually takes about two or three times, but that's what we're looking for. This is the second one. It's cooling off now. I'm using uh, oxygen and acetylene torch here, and it only takes uh, maybe a minute to a minute and a half to get this copper hot enough to do this. Uh, you can use map gas or the little propane torches. It's going to take a little bit longer, and I believe, believe you could do it on the stove too. I did each of these one time. You notice this one here has a nice salmon reddish color to it. This was the bottom where I had it sitting on the rocks like this. You can see where I didn't get the heat on it directly. Right there. This is what we want is this salmon color. All the way around. Cover as much of, this, of it as you can. This one here didn't take quite as well. But I'm going to do each of these three, maybe four times to get it as good as I can. This is what we ended up with from the Epsom salts that was cooked down to remove the water. I'm going to go ahead and crush this up and get it back into a powdered form. Okay, here's where we're at now. I took my alum, my no salt and my Epsom salts that I crushed up. Mix them together in here. You can see there's three consistencies. I use a digital scale to weigh everything to keep my mix right. 
<clears throat> Here's our copper and our magnesium. I'm going to go ahead and cook this mix down, add a little distilled water to get everything mixed together, and then cook the water back out of it until we get a solid crystal once again. And then we'll go ahead and crush that up, and that'll be our new medium for this next set of crystal batteries. Here is the three parts mixed together, put on the stove. Um, here's what I had. I had 70 grams of the MSO4, which is the Epsom salts cooked down, 40 grams of the no salt, 165 grams of the alum. I used about, I'd say a shot and a third of uh, distilled water. Mixed that all into a paste, and now I am cooking that back down into a solid form. About 30 minutes to get it to this point. We got a nice rolling bubble. I had this cooking on a stove for quite a while. I think I added a little too much distilled water to it, so I cooked it for a little while longer. Uh, and then I brought it outside to let it cool off, and I set the can in this pan. After about, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes, I came back outside, and damn if it hadn't ate through this can and leaked out into the, uh, the, the other pan I had below it. Interesting. Uh, but the crystal is setting up, and I guess I'm going to let some more water evaporate out of it, and then we'll go ahead and put it in the cells. Here is what I ended up with. I noticed that while this was sitting in anything aluminum, it got hot. I'm not sure what that is, but we'll find out what happens here in a moment when I make one of these batteries. I used the same method here with the press. Added a little bit of distilled water as I went. Uh, it's starting to get dark here, so I'm going to show you this before I uh, complete the second one here. But I got one of them done. Voltage isn't quite as high as just using the pure alum as in the last one I did. But the real interesting thing here is when we do current. We'll go ahead and pull this lead out. I'm going to switch the meter over here. Okay. Check this out. Normally we were on 200 milliamps. That's what happens if I plug it in here 200 milliamps with this cell. Overload. So, let's move it up to the 20 amp scale. We'll go ahead and switch it over to max. Dead short. A quarter of an amp. Amazing. Uh, Alright, I'm going to go ahead and get this other one put together. And then we'll run some tests on LEDs and some other things and see what we can do. Here are the two cells completed. And now we're going to take some readings. We're going to do voltage first. Cells almost one five. The cell is also one five. Some other things that's interesting to note if I poke around on here, some areas have I can't pick anything up. I'll poke around. Point four, point one. If I move over here, so that's interesting. Now we're going to go ahead and switch this over to amps. We're set up to do amps now. This one I have on the 20 amp scale, 
have it set to hold the maximum. If you notice, I sanded two little spots here. Because of the semiconductor layer, sometimes it's hard to get a good connection. I have yet to solder uh, my terminals on here. And we'll go ahead and connect this one. Wow. One third of an amp under a dead short. Amazing. Alright, let's go over here and switch this other cell. Okay. Hmm. A little over a tenth of an amp on this one. I could switch down to the next scale. Now that's really interesting. Both of these were made at the same time with the same thing. I wonder what's going on here. Very, very interesting. This is now series connection. Going to do an amp draw here. Let's go ahead and reset this. Put that on max. And go ahead and boop. We have a quarter of an amp, looks like. A little less than a quarter of an amp holding steady. Oh, it's dropping. But still, none the least. Pretty good. These cells are definitely improving and getting more powerful. I'll go ahead and hook them up in parallel and take that reading. Now both the cells are wired in parallel. We'll go ahead and hook that up. And this will spike of almost a half an amp. Amazing. These cells are definitely more powerful than any of the other ones I've made thus far. Uh, we'll have to see how they hold up. Uh, actually, I might take some of my original cells and disassemble them, uh, sand everything down to get back to some fresh metal, and make some more of this type. And see if we can uh, maybe get some voltages up to 6 volts and maybe half an amp, close to an amp. Um, see what we can do with something like that. This is under dead short, and we're still at a third of an amp. Amazing. All right, now we'll show the uh, LED lights and the little motor again. Wired back in series now. I do have the meter set to the milliamp scale, and I have that in between the positive of the battery and the light. Okay, we'll go ahead and hook the light in here. This is by far the most intensity I've had out of this. It's almost double in brightness uh, compared to the straight Allen battery and at least four times the brightness compared to the first set of batteries I made. Just looking off into the room. camera doesn't pick it up very well but it illuminates there we go something with a little reflection close to the wall here amazing brightness off of this and we still haven't stabilized yet I can turn this down another notch here I went down to the other scale. Interesting. I guess it's changed the impedance maybe in the meter. I'm not sure. So we're holding a pretty steady load here at 8 milliamps. Very nice. Alright, we have the little motor set up now. Let's grab the lead here and we'll see what we got. Actually, let me set the meter. Let me put this on max here so we can see what it spikes at for current. Okay, and then we'll come back over here. We'll hook her up. Okay, and we're off. 
they sell supply a decent amount of current. I checked the torque on this with sticking my finger on the plastic of the uh, or on the tip of the little plastic uh, gear that comes off of there, and it appears to be almost twice as strong as the previous cells. Now we'll just have to see how long these uh, these new ones can keep this up. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, here in a week or two, I'll post some updates of the two new cells. Uh, this cooked down mix with the three parts compared to the uh, straight alum uh, and we'll do some comparisons and see where we're at so this is the two alum cells, cells I made a little lamp here there's four of the 10 millimeter super bright LEDs They're wired in there. You can see them through there. Previously, I had four of the original cells all put together in series to run this. And I'd say about a little over half as bright as it, as it is now. Pretty neat. It's enough light there to do something with as a night light. 